I'm Kyla Williams, as I said earlier, I'm the Director of Operations for the Smart Chicago Collaborative. The Smart Chicago Collaborative is a civic tech organization responsible for improving the lives of Chicagoans using technology. Big job, small staff to do that. We do our work around three areas of focus. One is access. We really believe that folks in the city of Chicago should have access to the internet regardless of their ability to pay for it. The second one is skills. When you're on the internet, we want you to build skills, whether that's you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and you need to improve your technology um, department within your company, or you're someone's grandmother who's just learning how to get on Facebook and talk to her, her grandchildren. We want to be able to build skills. Um, in our community. And then data, which is what we deal with here, and you guys deal with mostly here uh, in the half of our group, is that we really want to make data play because, of course, if you give someone a big JSON file or some big, long Excel spreadsheet, most of us will cross our eyes, and in my case, I start to cry. So <laughs> we want to be able to take data and make it useful for regular people so we can have hospitals be able to show their patients where they um, are in their community health um, profile. We want to be able to show folks in education where their children are scoring at and, and use data in a visualized way to make it easier for us to understand and be able to tell stories, make improvements, and all of that stuff. One of the things that I love about Smart Chicago, so just a little background about me. So um, I, too, have a PhD. I just don't claim it because, you know, got to keep me cool. So, um, <laughs> I have a PhD in social work. I have a master's degree in counseling, and my bachelor's degree is in uh, biology pre-med. I did go to medical school for a short period of time. That whole blood thing kind of freaked me out, though, so I had to drop out quickly. But the one thing I do when I tell my story is that I'm not a technologist. You know, I didn't go to anybody's code school. I'm not a, you know, a computer science person. I'm just a regular old geeky nerd girl who likes things to work cool, and that is my interest in technology. And I came to work at Smart Chicago to work with Dan O'Neill because he, too, has a lot of internet technology geeky experience, but does not have that formal education. And so we feel like that's kind of the way that we all intersect. And, and it's interesting that we are running this technology organization and we don't have what one would consider to be a traditional technical background. We at Smart Chicago have lots of stuff going on. We have went from an organization of one, starting with Dan O'Neill in August of 2011, to two when I came on in December of 2011, and now we're up to four. Here we are, February 2015, but we've done lots of projects all over the city of Chicago. We just redesigned our website, so please check that out, smartchicagocollaborative.org. And we have a lot of things going on work-related. We align ourselves under these five kind of groupings of projects and programs, uh, health, education, justice, the ecosystem, and what we call special initiatives. Because Smart Chicago is what we uh, have termed an affiliate organization of the Hive Chicago Network, meaning that we are not like a child-serving direct type of organization, unlike maybe uh, an after-school program, so an after-school manager, something like that, but that we do have a vested interest in the ecosystem of education here and connected learning. And so our high programs, we have three of them that we're currently engaged with high on. Our first one is Civic Summer. Uh, Civic Summer is a cool, cool program. Our internet. Okay, there we go. So it was an experimental summer jobs program for teens focused on civics, media, and technology. So basically, we get a bunch of kids during the summertime with our partners, which is Make the Challenge, um, Free Spirit Media, and the Adler Planetarium. And we do a kind of civic tech uh, program for them during the summer months. And then every Friday, we do what's called Mass Action Days, where we work on things that are important to you 
and we try to pair technical solutions for them to either address those things or to get a greater, greater understanding or to you know impact some change. How many people are familiar with the app Expungio? Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> here is Kathy Dang. So Expungio is one of those things that came out of the, the mass action days. And we are looking for more solutions and more folks to join us this summer as we assist these youth with you know maneuvering through their lives and using technology as a solution to improve it and make it better. City Summer was uh, funded by the High last summer, and so yeah. We hope that uh, this summer coming up in June <laughs> will be a partner, and we'll probably be adding on another partner to assist us. If you're interested in this work, please come to us, help us, because we do these curriculum exercises ourselves. And we're always looking for cool people that like kids and want to help us to proctor ex exercises and, and um, opportunities for them in the learning world. Um, our other high um, project is one that I'm pretty proud of. It's called Time to Tech. Yeah, there we go. So Time to Tech is a um, new partnership between Smart Chicago and the Chicago Public Library Foundation. What we have found it, with nonprofits especially is that they have very little time and very little resources and budget to have their own employees, the folks that are within their organization, to be highly trained on technical things. And, and it may not even be like the super hard technical thing, like a WordPress. It may just be very simple things like Google Plus, which haunts me, or, you know, Facebook or, you know, LinkedIn and using that better. And, and because they don't have the resource or the infrastructure to support bringing someone in uh, and they're not aware of any other community based <laughs> opportunity. Those organizations are falling well behind as far as growing in their technical attitude. So we proposed an opportunity, and we called it Time to Tech, to allow folks within our networks, and it doesn't mean just the persons who come to our meetups, but folks within their organizations to come and receive free technology training in an attempt to raise their technical aptitude. We have a, a our first one is coming up on March 31. And uh, we will be advertising that this Thursday at our, our meetup with those members. And it's going to be around WordPress. The site that Robert uh, said was not so good, but it's the site that we use for Hive, is a WordPress-based website. There's portfolios on there for all the organizations. And normally, this is what happens at the meetup. Robert comes in, he's just like, OK, WordPress, put your portfolio in, do this, put some graphics, upload some videos, put your schedules, make it all happen. Yeah, you do it just like that. Like, like, and then everybody just starts saying, what is he talking about? <laughs> and then there's a deadline, and then Robert's sending out the, the, the email saying, what happened to all y'all putting stuff in WordPress? There's no pictures, there's no videos, and everybody's too ashamed to say, well, I don't really know how. So we're going to assist the membership with becoming WordPress mini experts, at least enough to be able to adhere to our high requirements and maybe be able to take some of that knowledge back into the organizations and you work you use WordPress as a, a mechanism to have greater reach and outreach and all those other cool things. Lastly, our last program, and I'll bring David up so that he can talk about it. This was the, the program, because I get excited. I don't know if y'all can tell, I get excited. But the high mapping cooperative was something that I stood up in the meeting and was like, we're going to win a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> so, because <laughs> this is something that is so exciting, where we are uh, partnering with the uh, Chicago Academy of Science and the, the No Bart Museum, Sweetwater Foundation, and we are trying to collectively recommend best practices for you who uh, use mapping tools around things scientific. And so it's very cool. We have lots of conversations about where this can go. And we've had uh, even a greater conversation about 
making this part of what we are calling the open science network or society or something. We're still working that out. But I'll bring David up so we can talk more about this particular project. This one was a new one as of last year, and some very cool things happened as a result of that. So I'll bring up David. All right, um, well, I'm Dave from the Nature Museum. Um, I actually didn't plan to talk at all tonight, but I'll do my best. So, um, the Hive Mapping Cooperative is basically, um, we're trying to look at open source free data collection, mobile data collection and data sharing software to kind of create, uh, to have youth collaborating across programs on questions about like urban ecosystems, community ecology, so local issues. Um, so that's one that we're actively working on, trying to create this sort of basically collaboration between youth and disparate programs in different, different parts of the city. Um, so that's one that we're pretty excited about. Um, we're still working our way through it. Um, we're still using a lot of different you know, free uh, mobile data collection apps that, uh, that we use out there, um, visualization stuff that's been a little challenging as well, but we're learning a lot as we're going through. Um, so that one's a cool one. I'm happy to talk about that for a long time. Um, the other things that uh, I think you can highlight are some of the things that we're working on um, for some of these types of called the moonshots, where we could definitely use some kind of direct assistance tonight. Um, I am not a programmer or coder or anything like that. Um, I work with teenagers. Um, but one of the things that uh, we were working on, one of these moonshots called the Ultimate Help. Um, and there's two aspects of that that we've been working on. One was looking at tools for aggregation and dissemination of learning opportunities. Um, so basically, we're in a situation right now where we're posting opportunities in multiple places, um, and it really is kind of hard to get the word out to all of you that we want to get the word out to. Um, and Basically, we're trying to eliminate some of that repetition of like, I'm posting here, 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 and here. I'm sending an email to this network over here. I'm sending this flyer to this network over here. So one of the things we're working on at the High Chicago Buds uh, kind of hacked it, uh, was looking at what tools exist for aggregation and dissemination. Um, one thing that came out of that was Karen Jeffrey from For All Rubrics um, kind of piloted a RSS aggregator. Um, so using RSS tools to kind of have a way that I could just post once, I have this program that I'm running at the Nature Museum, post that once, and then that can get distributed out to various uh, networks um, and adults of influence. Because what we found in kind of surveying youth is that a lot of youth are not going on the internet to find opportunities. They're basically learning about it from teachers, mentors, parents, things like that. So. That's one thing that um, we're working on, um, and you know, kind of in the early stages of that. Um, so there is the aggregation of that information, and the dissemination of that information, and also um, one thing that we didn't quite get to are some of the visualization tools we could actually use with that, um, because me as someone who's looking for opportunities sees like these awesome visualizations. Um, I just don't know how to make them, uh, but that's something that I think could be useful for you know, people that are looking for opportunities. For, uh, that's one thing. And then uh, something that we didn't get to on the uh, High Chicago Buzz Hack Day was kind of this idea of mapping out the different conduits and nodal points um, that is spreading out this information um, and how they, def how they tend to disseminate that information to their different youths. So, you know, there's a certain way that if you want to get flyers to the Chicago Public Library, there's like a protocol, like you send three copies to the branch and they send out all of them. Other small um, you know, certain churches or organizations might have a weekly newsletter. So, um, one thing that we were trying to do was just kind of get uh, a baseline of like crowdsourced and that information from within the network. Like, here are our networks for sending out information. Um, but something that we could definitely use help with, or I can help with, is just kind of pulling some of that data that already exists on like, the city data portal. Um, so, I know that there's all of the library locations and field houses and churches like that are probably on the, on the data portal. So even just helping navigate some of that could be uh, helpful. Yeah. 
That's about it. <laughs> so um, that's us together and collaboratively. Um, my last little bit of information is that we are gearing up for um, a three-year big project um, at the Smart Chicago Collaborative called the Connect Chicago Challenge. There's lots of opportunity for the growth of programs there. Um, Damon Drummer, those who are familiar with him, is the managing director of that program and now part of the Smart Chicago Collaborative. We need developers, coders, and web designers. We need you to come and help us to make the Connect Chicago Challenge the best thing and really a model program for digital skill learning, acquisition, data development. We have needs and we want to allow you to help us and help ourselves. <laughs> so, so please, 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 I do have business cards because I do have to run today because it's Mardi Gras and y'all know what happens on the Mardi Gras. But um, I want you guys to get, get in contact with me and please, if you have a skill to share, if you have an idea, Check out our website. Anything and everything that you want to know about us is there. And uh, I look forward to meeting with you and working with you hopefully. And then Robert will close that. Uh, all right, so just to close out, um, you know, I told you a little bit about how you can get in touch with us, how you can get connected. Our website, hotchicago.org, which isn't that bad, but I put together a lot of it, so that's why I'm not particularly proud. Um, but it's it's a it's a one resource you can use to learn a lot about us. HiveChicago.org, Hive Chicago Buzz is more about that event we had. At Hive Chicago Buzz is our Twitter handle. Um, so connect with us. But I just wanted to sort of reiterate and underline the point that there is a real need in the education community, in our civic community, to bring development talent and data analysis and visualization to an audience that doesn't have a lot of those resources available to them. Um, and there's some real big impact you could make, right? So the, the, uh, the potential for making an impact is huge because there's such a depletion of resources there, right? So if you're looking to make a big impact, Hive Chicago meetings, joining us is a way that you can get connected to programs are really needed. And I think it's it's clear, like when David's talking about like, oh, maybe we could, there's a way we could use RSS to like tell kids about events. Right, that's the level we're at here, right? So there's a there's there's a huge amount of impact you can make about building that technology infrastructure. The other interesting part here is that it's sometimes hard to build educational tools because it's hard to get into this school system. The school system can be very conservative and very uh, and very mobile, right? Not innovative because they're responsible for a lot of people because it's politically driven sometimes. But in our organizations, we're talking about a lot of highly flexible, highly innovative organizations. People who, if you have an idea, will be excited to try your idea. And a test case, right? An opportunity for you to iterate on a product idea. So we have this affiliate membership that Kyla mentioned. Our full partner members who are eligible for fun direct funding are youth serving organizations. But affiliate members are sometimes for-profit organizations like Utopia, like For All Badges, who are building products for the education sector and need organizations that are willing to test their products, help them innovate, improve them, and get the word out about those things. So if you're part of a for-profit enterprise organization, or you're a software developer that wants to like practice a little bit, right? that's where a great connection for you. So think about membership, too. I'm going to close with that. Thank you so much for listening to us for a good long time tonight. I'm really excited to work with any one of you. Come see me if you have any questions. I'm just ready to Q&A. you want to have questions? Do you want to do Q&A? Can you have two or three questions? Yeah, Scott, any questions? I'm here. I have one. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually on the last point you just made, um, referencing uh, Jefferson working with schools themselves. I noticed Chicago Public Schools is not is that intentional or what's the relationship? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think it's a little bit about how our network evolved and grew up. It started as a very small collaboration of museums and cultural institutions, and the natural evolution has been to aggregate more of those institutions, and then the libraries, and then the park district. So we're getting to a bigger scale, right? 
Um, CPS is a huge, I mean, it's like, it's 600,000 or 800,000 kids or something in CPS. 450? No, so, I heard 600 the other day, but that person may have not know what they're talking about. You clearly do, my friend. I trust you. That's a lot of kids, right? And when we ask our members to tally up every kid that they've ever worked with, you know, we get to like the number like that, but only recently with the addition of some of these big organizations. So we're, we're spreading to scale, but we weren't at scale to begin with. We work with CPS, there's lots of schools in our network, and there's a lot of interest. And if you guys have heard of the Chicago City of Learning, that's an initiative that involves a lot of our partner members and is directly working with the mayor's office and this and Chicago Public Schools. So since Chicago City of Learning is a really cool resource that does connect directly with CPS. Any other questions? Thoughts? Not too much. Anything for Kyle for David? But um, she was like, you might make her walk. Wait, what? Yeah, you might walk with me. Oh, I do the dance. <laughs> Thank you. That's, I'll take that. Any other comments on my behavior or my speaking ability or my WordPress development? Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you for having us. Uh, okay, so we're going to move into our uh, civic hacking course.